Hi guys, welcome back to a new video. Today we're going to be doing something similar to what I did a while ago with my friend Simon from the Rough and More channel. Uh, like we did a, um, a Skype call for about um, about 45 minutes to an hour or so. We discussed things around the hobby, etc. Today is going to be with um, a friend of mine called um, Kevin Fisher, who has his own channel. Uh, Kevin Fisher uh, Shooting Stuff channel. Um, I've put a link in the description below to his channel. I've, it's actually Put it slightly differently, but so the point. <laughs> so, um, great channel, um, much more regular schedule than I do with the posting videos, but um, very, very much, um, very dedicated to what he does. Um, a lot, as I said, a lot of shooting, um, all mainly historical firearms, a lot of Lee Enfields, different types, um, semi automatics, so the S, um, L1A1 SLRs, etc., and things like that. Great channel, and also he's starting into um, the Second War um, living history um, sort of side of it now. He has previously done um, <clears throat> 18th century um, uh, British, so this is sort of a new leap um, that he sort of started during lockdown. So get into that, and also what we, um, we and him have been helping each other in the past over lockdown with uh, Kit. We've been getting together for like, Monty's Men event which is next year and if you don't know what Monty's Men is <clears throat> it's a um, normally annual event where around 200 or so um, guys will be in full period kit um, as close as they can get it as close as they can get it to whatever they need um, for the event to to the minus to the smallest detail trying to get it accurate and you spend about a, um, a few days in the field, basically, living as it was um, in 1944. Um, so I'll be posting more about that soon, but um, we'll get onto the video. Um, it's about now, about almost two hours long, so it's quite a long thing. Um, there are some deviations through the, through the video, but but um, please, I hope you enjoy. Um, and um, it, was, it was really fun to have a chat, because we've been chatting online um, for so long we haven't really sort of spoken spoken properly so it's just nice to sort of uh, just get down to that so i really hope you enjoy and i'll join you again after the video bye cool uh, there we go cool. we're on right. <laughs> awesome okay. right. cool yeah um epic military did you find them at all or Yep, look, look at that. Um, original Italian Army Surplus Wooden Socks 295. Yeah. I, I, I bought like three pairs of them. I thought these are perfect because they're exactly the same. Because I, 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 I brought up the picture then and looked at it a few times and then compared them to uh, pictures and that of, I could see of originals. As far as I'm aware, exactly the same. Maybe a little bit thinner, but they're made of full wool. So. Brilliant. Not, Brilliant. Thanks for that. That's all right. You're welcome, mate. There they go. Oh, brilliant. Help me spend more money. <laughs> Not less than you would have spent if you bought them from bloody YPG. Well, I, I think the worst one was chatting to you um, um, about something. I remember once um, it was about midnight, and I ended up like buying a, a battle dress blouse. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's so me because I'm just like I was like, oh yeah, I'll only. Because I am trying to really restrict myself to buying only two things a month now, because I went too fucking mad over um <laughs> over a lot. I was like, no, no, I've really just got to calm down. I'm spending too much money. Because <laughs> I think what there was one time, because um, oh, what was it? I was really tempted at one point. I ended up getting the battle dress, um, the second one, because I was looking at a really, really nice, just as like a thing. Uh, it was 1950. What six or seven? Um, Paris mock. I was really tempted by it. I was like, do I really want it? I really, really want it. But it was like two hundred and seventy-four quid. I was like, do I? Do I? <laughs> no, I better not. I'll buy that dress instead because <laughs> it was like over a hundred quid cheaper. I thought, sod it, why not? Um, well, I've um, so I was mentioning the shirt. Yeah. The only, the only thing I'm really missing now when it comes to that is the shirt. Um, and I've ordered one on with what, what price? What price? No, I ended up buying one directly using their, you know, the online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they weren't answering the emails, mm. and um, um, I got I've got the receipt of payment mm. about a week ago, but no further email about. Shipping. Yeah. So I yeah. Don't know. 
that's the only thing I've got uh, that's technically missing now outwardly. Yeah, yeah. Other bits and pieces that are obviously like we were talking before about the AB64. Yeah. Um, but I'm pretty much there. So I've got my first ever event this weekend at Kent, <laughs> Kent, Kentwell. Water yeah, that, that looks really, really good, actually, yeah. yeah that looks really good. Lot, who invited me after seeing my video and, um, yes. you know, helped, helped my hobby spiral, at my lockdown hobby <laughs> spiral into more debt. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I've got my first event with those guys there, um, and I'm just going to have to wear my Soldier of Fortune, um, um, yeah. you know, one, yeah. one for that. Yeah. And I really don't know the difference of quality. Okay, so we know about the differences between the, the BD Soldier of Fortune, you know, the yeah. part of the... Yeah, uh, I think yeah, because um, it's um, with I think the problem I think with not not just Soldier Fortune, but a lot of main mainstream like reproductions like from Epic and oh god, the History Bunker. You, um, no, honestly, you to me, I'm I'm just no, 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 I was pretty right. <laughs> the History Bunker are like the Primark of the <laughs> of the reacting world. Their stuff is absolutely shite, um, and they. They they sell it at roughly the same price as everywhere else, but it, it's dreadful. Like I, I I bought one or two things from there years ago when I first started, in, and it fell apart within days of having it. It's just yeah. they're just absolutely dreadful, um, and they're very very rude when you try and get in top, top contact with them. As far as I've been aware, um, well, I've had um, dealings with them, but that might just be me. Um, oh, what was it? Yes, but no, the sort of fortunate ones because um, they say they've got the 1937 pattern. Battle dress, yeah, it's got a lined collar. Yes, you mentioned there, and then yeah, but it which makes it more close to the nineteen forty pattern, not austerity one, but just the nineteen forty pattern esque. Um, um, but then you've got the buckle, which is wrong for that. So on my first video, when I'm just like my first lockdown hobby video, yeah, I was saying right, I got this. It's the nineteen forty, and as as I'm explaining to the camera, I'm looking. Oh, that's got a lining. Oh, hang on, what? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I was like, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. But then, the, yeah, the, for what it's then with the col with the line collar, it then should be obviously not. But and but no, the buckle's wrong. It should be the same as the austerity. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but you, you can you, you can replace them though. You can replace them so it looks more authentic to what it is. Because um, so you can find them for like five quid or whatever the buckles yeah. and just so recent. No, but, I mean, I've seen it, yeah, exactly, exactly. But I have to confess, considering it was just supposed to be a little lockdown hobby, uh, a yeah, yeah. good, good learning opportunity, <laughs> for the price, I think it's actually quite good stuff. To yeah, well, yeah, that's what I think. Well, I generally think this was so, so bad, really. In, like, it's not the best, obviously, but for, I think for the for the sort of level player for market, like price-wise, I think it's really, really fine. Yeah, I mean, it was good for that. It was a good, good learning opportunity. If I'd have known... Now, actually, as we saw in the latest Monty's Men, um, the article, they, that really good one about the BD. Yeah. Said about wasting money, you know, don't buy it, and you, you're just going to have to buy it yeah. twice. Yeah. yeah. I agree with that. But at the same point, uh, for example, from my in my particular instance, my intention wasn't to go into reenacting. It, yeah. was, just, it was just like, to, you know, build some displays because, you know, shooting shooting for so many years, I've gathered bits and pieces, <clears> I wanted to put together, so, you know, some bits and pieces and then stop myself going insane, you know, during lockdown. <laughs> Yeah. Um, instead, I've gone insane by spending every <laughs> penny I got, you know. But so I don't regret it. I mean, of course, if I'd have known then that I would, I would eventually be invited to join a group and then get invited to, yeah, to, to yeah. participate in Monty's Men, I wouldn't have done it. I would have gone straight out for the better stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know? But I don't regret it because that well, was it's, 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 as you say, it's a learning curve, isn't it? So yeah. But so I've got now. I mean, I've got my actually. Let me just grab it. <laughs> It's even got badges on it now because nice. There's me Suffolk. <laughs> oh, that's nice. So they saw the video and I got PM'd and they they asked me. Where did you get your insignia from? From them, directly. Oh, oh, wicked! Oh, that's good. Yep. Oh, that's really I'm good. I'm missing the um Maiden thing, whatever it's called there, the the red and yellow one they got there. Oh yeah. That's, that's just because that weren't in stock at the moment. <coughs> oh, fair enough. But I've got that, and there it is. That so that's my austerity pattern. 19, that's, that's 1945, original, unissued, uh, absolutely brand spanking new. As I was mentioning before, sorry, there's a bit of glare from the light. But that's right, the same, same with me as well. And I've got 
talking about obviously difficulties at the moment in getting the shirt, even though I've paid for one and waiting for it to turn up. Yeah. But until then, for this event this weekend, I've got the Soldier of Fortune one. Yeah. Now, I don't know if you know, we know why the BD from SOF Soldier of Fortune is not up to scratch. But what about the shirts? Are they, are they, is it the same yeah. problem or is it the I, 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 I think it, what? I, I think it's the cloth. I don't know. It's, um, because they, they, there's always this thing of, oh, they're not up to scratch, but why? Um, um, well, they explained why the BD wasn't good enough, but nobody... Yeah, but I've, no, I've not heard... I think it might be the cloth or something. I think that apparently it looks too felty. I don't know. But what's your what's your view on it from what you can see? Well, I don't know because I've, I've never seen an original. So. Oh, well, let me just grab mine then. Crikey! Let me just look. There's mine. Um, this one is. Oh, I don't think that's the. Uh, no, there's the. Uh, so the lady can just. See. Yeah. So obviously we're losing a bit of quality because of you, you know your um. Yeah. Camp, but yeah. But in I general, like... it's it's very um. Was it? Very very much like a flannel t-shirt in a way. Flannel I shirt. Have a feeling then that you might be right that because my SOF one it does look a little bit felty possibly. Yeah. It's but, got but the right metal buttons though, which is apparently which is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, that's good. Yeah, because this one's a bit later. One, this one's got plastic buttons. Oh, okay. okay. The, the, metal, the metal zinc buttons are more early war. Yeah. Or early to mid sort of thing, as far as I'm aware. And this one is obviously a later war one, but it's been um, altered to accommodate um, the addition of the uh, collar later on. Oh right, yeah, 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 got that. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I would say basically like flannel. Almost. I've actually, I've been actually looking for an original for a long time, but they they they're hard to get. I think I saw your one and tried to buy it, but you'd already bought it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I was I've been scouring like those um like very dated websites <laughs> that they sort you sometimes find. We have to go to that weird bar thing, and it doesn't. And if you try to go back, you have to refresh the page. Sort of thing. <laughs> but wasn't it you that that sent me the link to my? My austerity pattern blouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think famous it was, yeah. expensive midnight. <laughs> sleep and I'm and I'm chatting to you about World War Two stuff and spending money. You know. You. <laughs> you fueled uh, this monster. Don't start me. <laughs> <laughs> but so after I got that. Okay, where can I find one? Let me have a look. <laughs> I then got the bug for the trousers. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I've got the original that, and I, got, <clears throat> and, and I tell you that was that was hard because they're a lot harder to get hold of. Oh yeah. yeah. And sizes, and I I have to admit, and that I did that video as well, the unboxing for the trousers, and I really kind of bought them blind because yeah. there was obviously one of the first things that gets lost on these things is the is the label, isn't it? Yeah, and then she then just sizes out the window. You're like, oh shit. So I got it off of was it um uh, who was it? Yeah. Oh. oh, oh. It'll come back to me, but it they measured it as roughly a 31 waist, yeah, by measuring, yeah. Um, now I'm a 32, mm. well, pre lockdown, I think, <laughs> a little bit, yeah, yeah, quite a bit we, of we, we, won't, we won't go there, <laughs> um, and so, but I thought, well, okay, I'm gonna take an absolute gamble, and if they don't fit. <clears throat> Um, it doesn't matter because it's great to have in the collection because these the trousers are getting more and more rare in decent condition. Yeah, yeah. Because I found loads of pairs that probably would have fitted, but there were moth holes here, repairs exactly. there. Exactly. I, I found a the... risk, and I put them on thinking uh, I couldn't believe it. They fit. <laughs> they fit. <laughs> <It was> like... <laughs> yeah. Well, they fit then. I hadn't put on. I hadn't put on. Put them on for about two weeks, and I've had my Italian mother-in-law here, so I've probably oh, yeah. cooking here. <laughs> But, <laughs> um, so technically now I've got you know it's it's really great if I can sort out the shirt then um, then I'm, then I'm there. Yeah. Now I have got the um, I, I'm on as many people are on the waiting list for some pattern forty from What Price Glory Central Europe. Yeah. Um, which of course would be preferable when lying in a puddle. In yeah. On the yeah. But either way, I've got my first event this weekend. I didn't have a uniform. I would have had to have gone in Soldier of Fortune. Yeah. Uh, so at least now I can at least go and, you know, I won't be hidden at the back of the ranks because <laughs> you know, I'm an embarrassment. I've got... I've got you know. Exactly. <laughs> it looks really, really good. Honestly, it looks really good. That's I'm a... really, really chuffed of it. And I, initiated, and I found it... It was one of those 
really the trousers I paid pretty much I think what they're, they're worth so I paid quite a lot and I knew that but it was from a military site yeah, so yeah. Pay yeah. Those, those prices out. it was so lucky with that that fine because it did you get was it from was it from the states wasn't it it was from the states and if you, and, and, and if I mean for example having a look at the the sellers other items she was selling like plant pots and bits and pieces <laughs> So that's when you're you're likely to get lucky. That if nobody else is looking at that moment, yeah. you might get away with a lucky bid. And I got a lucky bid. It could have gone silly prices. Yeah. So no, I'm, de I'm dead chuffed with that. I've, I've had a few. I've had some luck with some lucky bids, and and I've also bought some crap. <laughs> Part of the learning. No, no, same, same with me, mate. Like I just bought this. Oh no! Like I accept. Like I, I thought I was buying like um. French invasion money. I ended up buying like a bunch of German. I was like, for fuck's sake! I was like, what am I doing with rag sharks? Like, what am I doing with this? And then, then I was, and then I was down my mum's house, and um, I forgot that her uncle had been around the world in like the um, like twenties and thirties, um, and literally brought back like hundreds and hundreds of like notes and coins from about a dozen different countries from that period. So I've got like um, rag marks from like the thirties, and stuff like that it's crazy so I've got, oh, I you just, just admitted on camera that you robbed somebody of the... <laughs> <laughs> I knew it I no, was, it was talking, a family member talking of documentation though that is um, that is that is where I'm still lacking at the moment because as you know um, as, we, as we discussed before <clears> Adler, <throat> they're not currently yeah. out of stock but I'm not too worried I expect it will be in stock yeah uh, and we're, and, uh, we're almost a year as well, so we've got almost a year, so I'm not a worry. It's not a worry there. And worst case scenario, literally a week before the trip, still nothing. I'll grab a soldier of fortune AB sixty. <coughs> yeah, you know um, that's the least of it. What I've been really concentrating on and what's taken a lot of um, a lot of effort has been the the small pack kit. Yeah, yeah. One, the learning process of understanding what it was, and then uh, sourcing the stuff. But because I'm also like a collector mm. um wanting to have as much original i could have probably got it all in a week with um with just buying replica yeah repro stuff i really wanted to kind of get you know as much as physically and i've managed i've managed to get everything as you know and you even helped me out with the, with the the auto strop oh yeah <laughs> You're looking for but, that. you know i could have bought like straight away i could have bought a repro uh, wash roll i could yeah. have got you know and I've managed to get everything, even the emergency ration tin. I managed to get an original of those, the sanitizer tins, um, you know, my shaving brush is 1944. Um, so it's nice to know it's all original. Yeah. The only yeah. stuff that is repro for obvious reasons was the shaving stick the tooth and the toothpaste. Yeah. I bought one of those off of old time design. I think it was old time design. Yeah, they're stuff. Because yeah, so, they got stuff. Yeah, so so that is literally that. And apart from that, so I've completed the small pack, uh, the mm. haversack, the small pack, and um, and that that was really interesting because I never been like I said I've been doing 18th century for so long, mm. I never knew the details of like a soldier small pack. It's insane, and I think I think another problem is well, especially with around the British reenactment, Second World War stuff in general. There's there's so much you see like oh I pack my stuff with this. It's there's a lot of individuality with it, but also there's a lot of misinformation about like what was carried and stuff like that. I think, like people are carrying like button sticks and that. Like you wouldn't carry button sticks whilst you're on whilst you're on deployment. Like, yeah, it's, yeah. Like, it's like what what are you shining? <laughs> like, yeah. um, I just want to give you. I don't. I don't know. It's crazy. Um, and um, I think another worst one is is the um, soap tin. Is another bad one. Um, yeah, I, I saw that uh, on Rifleman Moore video was also pretty good, especially if you're starting out like me from scratch. Yeah, yeah. there was some good that stuff. Is, it was great for that. And, you know, making sure you don't buy, you know, like the wrong mess tins, things like that, you know, the, the yeah. details could also end up, end up costing you. So I think um, Rifleman Moore saved me a few quid. Yeah, <laughs> on that. yeah, no, definitely me as well, because I was like, I ended up did getting a few of the items he said not, but that's for my um, post-war jungle kit anyway that I'm building up anyway. Yeah, because yeah. I'm doing that as well. So, well, that was mainly la that was mainly last year's project, um, because I was um, in April I was supposed to go to Hat Green, uh, nu uh, nuclear bunker. They have like a Cold War event on there, and me and me and a couple of friends were um, from like the group the group I'm in that we're going to do um, uh, Malaya. So that building up on that and um, yeah, that's that's coming along nicely. That's that's why I like I invested in the, the, my number four in that. So 
so, so what you're saying is Monty's Men's not enough for you. You need to spend more money. Yeah. <laughs> I think I owe you about this, this is a disease. It it's a disease. <laughs> <laughs> Send help. Yes. <laughs> Preferably but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I've, got, I've got my small kit. That, that's I'm really pr pr pleased with that. I've pretty much closed that out. And now, I, what's the new layout thing? I was like, I you know, that was really, really good, mate. Like, really good. And it's, you know, it's it's in a fairly short period, so I feel pretty yeah. happy that I'm, you know, a lot, and I've really learned a lot. But I've had a lot of support from people like you, from Richard, from the, you know, the, the Vickers yeah. Museum, um, and you know, that's been really good. And then loads of videos I've had from more, more videos yeah. and books, and, and and this book as well was just like. Yeah, actually, let me just grab the two I found really, really helpful lately as well, and which I think I used for reference when I was helping you a couple of times. Uh, that one. Uh, so there is, so this one. Right, is that the, the World War II Tommy? Yeah, I found it really good because it goes through, um, from... Very early war to the late war, um, different sort of parts of it and stuff to Normandy. Um, just trying to find a good. He does like what section stuff as well. Oh yeah, that's. So what the section carries. Um. And then about. I'm talking about section, learning about sections. That video. Um, uh, was it the the, the British infantry section video? Yeah, I think they were Welsh regiment. I think I think they were Welsh guards or something. Yeah, there was a lot of Welsh accents there. When they when they step forward and they say, "I am the platoon commander," and yeah. I am... <laughs> I'm the gunner. Yes. I'm, I'm wondering now, do, do we have to work on the accent? Does that have to be a <laughs> <laughs> for Scottish, yeah, yeah. I didn't see anything in the kit regulations about accents, so maybe we're okay. <laughs> we're, we're okay for that for Montes. I think it'd just be like if, if it was accents, it'd just be pissed Glaswegian for the entire event. <laughs> oh, there's one thing I wanted to ask you though. Um, originally, uh, obviously talking about your leather jerkin and that. Yeah. And that's what I was originally I was looking for as well. Yeah. However, I had an I ended up getting a really, really, really amazing deal on some yeah, great, great, yeah. and so. Um, I went for the great coat. Yeah, I think that's, that's, that's fair enough. I think for the price you paid for all of it, what you got was amazing. And do you know something? I, <coughs> I took I took that ground sheet. So I've got, I obviously, I bought a, um, you know, I've got a repro ground sheet. Yeah. But when the guy was selling that stuff, and he also had an original 1942 ground sheet, mm -hmm. I took that, but that's for the collection. Did, did, did you buy, did you get it from Facebook or did you get it from eBay or... No, no, no. Uh, so uh, a guy, Kev, who's in my section, yeah, Monty's section, um, he said, you know, are you looking for anything? Well, no, I, I, I was asking him for, you know, um, for, you know, some, you know, some tips and advice, looking for stuff. Yeah. And he said he's got a friend that's um, selling some stuff, and he, uh, his friend does vehicles. He used to be reenacting. He's not, he's not in, into it so much anymore. So he wanted to get rid of some stuff. Mm. And he said, you know, what, you know, what do you want? And he showed me some pictures, and I saw. I mean, I showed you the picture. You know, mm. there was a, the great coat. There was loads. A lot of the stuff I already had. You know. Yeah. But I was still looking for a pullover, and I was tempted to go for a soldier fortune one because, uh, you know, according to Montes, that's okay. Um, but of course, I'd always like an original. And I was like, hang on a second. It, and I, I wrote to the guy. I said, that pullover is it original? And he went, yeah, nineteen forty original. And the ground sheet, yeah, yeah, nineteen forty three original. And the great coat, oh, yeah, yeah, original. It's, he said all my stuff's original, <laughs> and he gave me a massively good deal. So I'm literally not going to go for the, um, the the leather jerkin. I'm going to go for the great coat because I've got yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. I bet that's perfect. Well, I haven't got it yet. It's still in the post. Yeah, yeah. but that I think because when you mentioned me, that I was like, that is really, really good. Because because I saw I saw I think I think he had it on eBay as well as like a whole group thing as well, and I was as far as I was aware because I saw that and you, I think he was doing the whole lot for about. Two grand or something. Yeah, something along that lines. I was like, oh, okay, maybe next I remember, time. <laughs> I remember seeing it on eBay the, the whole lot for about yeah. two grand. I don't know. If, I don't think it's the same guy though. Oh, okay. Because I remember that picture. There was one like a full set. Yeah, very very similar. Yeah. Um, but but this wasn't, and he had loads of other stuff. In fact, there was some tank gear he had that was um, that a friend of mine was interested in, but it, it already been sold. Oh, okay. But um, no, so I mean, I don't know. What is the the whole thing about the jerkin versus the great coat? Or well, it's, 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 or I think what? it's about like weight and 
Um, usability, I think, because with 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 the with the great coat, it's obviously mainly sort of an overgarment, and it's very good when it's very very cold and all sorts of stuff. But it's utility wise for doing stuff, it's not very practical. But I think at the end of the day, if it's that hot, you're only really going to be using it at night. So that's why I think the great coat's good. But I like the jerkin though in a way because it's it. I can you if it does get chilly during anything and then night working as well. It's very very good for um, wearing and you can have your equipment over it. You much more ability. Yeah yeah yeah. And also if you're sleeping it as well, um, if it gets dirty, you just wipe it clean. And that's yeah. the good thing about it. But there's well, there's. I mean, I would have. I was looking for um, the, the the you know the leather jerkin. There were some other things that were priority first, like sort of yes. uniform. Yeah. Uh, then, of course, other things to discuss, for example, that the, you know, the TAM, mm. bits and bit, you know, that sort of thing. But, um, like I said, I got, it was such a good deal. And, um, you know, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have passed it up either, to us. Yeah. And I'm, I'm glad I went for the ground sheet as well, just because try, try finding an original ground sheet. Exactly. Basically. You know, they, they're harder and harder, you know, so. So I'm chuffed to just, uh, you know, look every day I hear the postman come. I think, <laughs> <laughs> but then again, I've been on that every day. I mean, I'm literally, you know, I'm, I'm scared when the postman knocks at my wife's home because she's like, <laughs> no, you know, <laughs> I mean, even today, uh, you know, another 37 pattern belt came through, you know, because I wanted the second one. To oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember you saying, yeah, to um, yeah. have a good No, 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 mate. That, that, believe me, that wasn't that. Oh. that another one. <laughs> Because, and this is, I've done this a couple of times. I've bought something, and then a little bit later, I've seen a better one. Yeah, yeah, I've done that as well. But, and I, I, I can't let the better one go. I know. I know what, I'll get it. So I've got about seven belts now. <laughs> I think this, like, I think reenacting, especially like, like, I think eBay as well, like, should be like classified along with like heroin or cocaine because it's a bad addiction. <laughs> no, it, it is. I, I've, I, I've gone over the top. <laughs> I've got so carried away by the enthusiasm. Um, a lot of it pushed by obviously, you know, the Monty's men thing and the fact that I was uh, I was asked to join the Suffolk Suffolk group. Yeah. And that Suffolk regiment. And I want obviously get ready as quickly as possible. But the truth is mainly because I'm enjoying it. I'm exactly. Enjoying it. I love studying it. It's a bit like when, you know, I've been shooting for many years. Whenever I buy a new rifle, you know, obviously military surplus, not into modern shooting. Yeah. It's not just getting the rifle. It's then studying every aspect of that rifle, every mark, every, uh, you know, armourer's, you know, mm. thing. And then it's all the equipment that goes with that as well. Well, that's how my whole thing was born. Because <laughs> gathering, as I said, going around arms fairs and that sort of thing for many, many, many years, you pick up a bit here, a bit there. You know, and then I didn't really de delve that deeply into that. But, of course, I yeah. did a bit. You know. Yeah. So... It's just, of course, now because of lockdown, shooting was closed. You know, the, the ranges were closed, and I decided to like uh, completely go insane and spend everything, and possibly get divorced. And uh, you know, the kids are going to leave me, and you know, <laughs> it'll <laughs> be fun. Hey, wait a second, right. just got, a you'll have enough money for oh, Christmas. Don't worry. I just want another another beard. Hang on a second. Oh Christ! <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Here, here, here was the other book as well. This one as well. Ah. This one thing can this was um, the older versions are normally a two-parter, but this one I think it's been condensed into one. It is honestly brilliant because it goes through um, like uh, caps and that as well. Um, in the other one, it goes through. Um, actually, I think it is this one. Yeah, there we go. All the different colours and what is appropriate for different reference for the um, oh, wow. like home service forage caps. Um, I managed to find the. Uh, Hampshire's uh, Royal Hampshire's officers one actually, but not too bad a price for about what twenty quid, I think it was. Um, yeah, and then cat badges, etc. And this is what I sent you about the um, that address that time. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. No, it's it's a great book. So it's um, uh, from D Day to V Day, the British soldier basically. Well, I mean, I mean and then the underwear. I mean, well, uh, there you go. Ah, yeah, I wanted to ask about that. So. What you done about your pants, mate? <laughs> <clears throat> um, I don't know. There's the the company I think they suggested, which was called I don't can't remember what it was called now. Some old Etonian style like name yeah, company. One. I can't remember the name of it, but um... I looked at it and they're not badly priced to with you for what they're offering. So, um, what I did, um, just 
although some people say I'm a bit silly. I've got some originals. That's fair enough. I think got, if, if they're a good nick, why not? I've got two pairs of, as my wife called them, granddad. So sorry. <laughs> yeah. I mean, of course, I've still got time, but um, oh, and there's one more thing I've got to change because I did go for those elasticated soldier fortune braces, which are not acceptable. Yeah. But in that lot of stuff that I bought. Yeah, yeah, the braces, yeah, the yeah. Braces. Mm. So if I can sort out my shirt, mm. I'm done. Exactly, exactly, exactly. You know, and that's the best thing. And then you, and then you can take as much time as you need to focus on. Be um, waiting on any paper you want to get and think as well. So yeah, no, it's it's. Yeah. I think that I I think the only the only other another thing I've got to get is just a couple of L straps from my large pack, um, you know. But that's not that's not a massive problem at the moment. Yeah, so I, I did not. For some reason, I've got four right L straps. <laughs> to that, I like. I ordered from this web website. I got I got a, I got another large another large pack from there. Um, with with the original sort of thing, it was uh, early war sort of blank on it because I was setting up an early war set as well, um, and I bought some um, cross straps and that. Make sure I bought, bought a left and right, and they gave me two completely different sized ones. I was like, well, what's the point of me ordering? Like they, I'm all, obviously ordering a set. Why didn't you give me the two the same bloody length? Yes. And then they, um, what else was wrong? There was something else which was wrong as well. The belt I bought from them is really really nice belt, but it's like. The, the design of the um, actually I think, I think it's behind, where is it I don't know but um I'll grab my belt my latest one yeah, yeah I'll, I'll grab I'll see if it's in the drawer actually I think it's in the drawer No, I didn't. No idea where it is. <laughs> Somewhere. You got? Have you got your bandoliers? Um, I've got. I I did order um some uh a couple of Repro ones because I did. I've got ones like that, but they're the the post war ones. I've got um mostly post war three or three ones. So I've got to get some more um wartime esque ones. Well, I've got, I, already, I mean, this is stuff that I already had because of shooting. So, you know, I've got, oh, yeah. for example, this one, this one here is really cool. This is um, 1921. That's nice. And it's got the various filling dates on it, which and there's no way you can probably see them on the camera. Yeah. But the first time this was filled with 50 Ball 303 was in, was on the 31st of October, not, not, 2021. 1921. Yeah. Another refill in January 1939, and then add another refill in December 1946. So that's an original. Yeah, not bad. Nice the history of that one. But I've got a load of these ones here. Actually, I can give you a couple of them. I got. Oh, cheers! Thank you. They're the ones. They're, the, they're exactly the same as in they've got the um, the hooks. Yeah. They're post war, but the, I can't see any difference between this and this. Yeah. Because, because my my I think my my post war one because it's it's the tan one, um, they, they went from cotton straps to um like webbed almost. Um, well, straps. I think that's that's the only difference. But that that's that's one of the cotton ones, so that's good. So um, yeah, I mean, it I looks mine was nineteen sixty something. This one looks, and this one's nineteen sixty. But then again, you're probably okay. fine, just as we were discussing um, earlier before we hit record. Uh, we were discussing the various differences between battle dress even yeah. during the war, as yeah. in different shades, mm. uh, you know, from uh, Belfast to Manchester. Yeah. You'll probably find it's different with the stuff here as well. Because <laughs> yeah, exactly. I did a couple of photos and put them up on, um, I don't know, it was on one of my videos, actually. Someone commented about the uh, the um, the bandoliers and that, and they were saying about all the post-war one. I was like, well... It, how is it as a well because of the weapon? I was like, I was like, really? Is it really like there must have been some point during the war where there was a web, but I might be wrong. But 
Have you got? Have you got? A, have you got one with the web? Because I'd like to compare it to this. this yeah, I, and compare it to this original. Yeah, have I? Oh. Da, 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 da. Oh, the room's a shit hole. Um. <laughs> I'm going to do this in the bedroom it's... with the iPad because I've got a house full of Italians at the moment, so I can't. <laughs> I think it's in one of our pictures, actually, on my phone's been. <clears throat> oh, in the meantime, check out the shine on that. Look at that. Oh. Sergeant Major will be pleased with you. <laughs> but like I said, I end up buying... You'll be, you be giving you a kiss before you go to bed tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need a shaving mirror now, do I? <laughs> <laughs> that is a that is a green mate, but you must have been out of the brass for probably hours. <laughs> uh, I'll, 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 I won't tell you the truth. <laughs> <laughs> a wire brush and dental. <laughs> oh, I've got. Um, this is this is slightly wrong. This is 1951. That's fine, mate. It looks exact. They they use the same design up until what? I think, seven... if I'm not mistaken, if I, I can't remember, but I think it was. That's a nice one. This that is the slight giveaway post-warish, possibly. Yeah. But. That's I nice. Not, I am not going to buy a yeah. original World War Two one at the moment. I'm. I've literally. I've broken the bank. <laughs> God, my my stuff's all over the place. I don't even know where stuff is. But my, my one specifically, it hasn't it hasn't got the Marlin spike. Um, but it was um, my great grandfather's who was the Royal Engineers during the war. Um, so he, he, I think he bought it himself um, privately because um, he was oh, a, yeah, okay. he was a regiment yeah, yeah. private major. So he just like I'm having what I bloody want. So <laughs> um, but yeah, that, yeah. Oh, I tried. I did my first experiment using the um, uh, um, the auto strop razor. Oh, there. Yeah. Well, I thought I've got I've got my first event this weekend. I have to shave with it. I better try it out beforehand. <laughs> Bloody hell, it was hard. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. It was okay. It was okay. A bit scary. I thought it was going to rip rip my throat out, you know. But... Oh, and another few mistakes I made. For example, buying, you know, the webbing. Yeah, yeah. Bought two once, and uh, like one was so short. Yeah. Like, wouldn't go through and you know you couldn't attach your water bottle or anything else to it because it was just so short it's like what's going on there oh and another waste of money um ignorance on my part i bought the um the pouches with the tabs oh right yeah the mark threes yeah you know the mark yeah, yeah the mark three not the mark three yeah the one yeah because you've got mark three they're mark threes but they're later mark threes because to fit um They've just got the quick the release the quick yeah release. yeah now, which apparently were made during the war, but they didn't actually get dished out until after the yeah, war. Yeah, they, they, they were. Ver they've seen very, very few pictures. Like, yeah, they were, I think they were one picture. Picture. I think I saw one yeah. picture was World and uh, World War Two where they they did have that. But either way, those are, mm. those. But then again, it's just like an expensive learning curve, you know. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I'll send you the picture of the. Um, I tried to get close up on the uh, strap from the. Um, uh, Bandelier. Yeah, send us a picture so, uh, you know, so I can have a look at that, see the difference. But like I said, I've got an absolute 100% original Bandelier and I've got a 1960s one. Mm. And apart from obviously looking a bit newer, yeah, um, can't see much different. Hang on, let's have a look at this picture then. Right, okay. It's, so you can just see it's all like webbed. That's a web strap. Well, yeah. That, that post war one I've got there is a cotton strap and it's yeah. 1960s. So it must have just been some carried on using exactly, exactly, cotton and some used. I've got some. I've got a couple of nineteen seventies ones downstairs. I'll have to have a look to see if they're web. So cotton is good, web is bad, basically. Yeah. Yeah, apparently, as far as I've been told. So yeah, but I've, I've got some like ones which are from the nineteen seventies, which are green though. They're all um, they're oh, cotton. No, they're, I've got, I've got a couple of those as well. So, you know. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I, uh, I, I, I heard I got them when I bought loads of like in a um, throw three a couple of years ago. Um, broke on Facebook I was talking to. He was like, "Oh, I've got loads of about 150 rounds of throw three in it. If you want, I was like, "Yeah, go ahead." Um, about 100 quid down the drain. <laughs> yeah. And that was, it was worth it because it, it gave me something to fill out stuff with. 
And then, lo and behold, a couple of years later, um, when all that blank through three, I got a hold of, I was like, Jesus Christ. So, yeah. Which I need to talk to you about some blank. Because, uh, yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll chat about that another time because I don't want to talk about spending money. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. That's but, fine. I'll talk about talk this three, three. So, I've done... Um, um, so, the, the, only really, the only thing I really need to do, I mean, I already had the rifles, like the rifles <laughs> before anything else, yeah, was um, put in for the variation on my FAC so that my number four would be um, it could be used for <clears throat> yeah uh, for reenacting. So I called them. So I just sent sent an email to to the police. Uh, I got interviewed. Or, you know, just got an interview basically where they they asked me why some information about the Suffolk lot, Suffolk regiment, and then um, they said, yeah, fine. Oh, okay. They called. They, they called them. They wanted. They you know. They checked them out. They they called the guys from the Suffolk's to say, "Do you really know a guy?" Who <laughs> or is he trying to pull a fast one? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, so I mean, I did it exactly. But I I had to kind of prove it as well when I had when I got the shotgun license to be used for for the um mainly mainly for the brown best and also yeah. my explosive license. Oh yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. And the same thing there. They wanted to see proof. They wanted to see warning or warning orders from events. They wanted to see photos of events. They wanted. <clears> to see so yeah. I did that. I got that. Um, that was that was fine. So uh, at least that's going to save me a few quid on monitors, isn't it? Because if you get your exactly. own license, that's about over a hundred quid worth. Because obviously blanks, and I'm and I'm happy to help out with blanks and that without payment, mate. Honestly, I'm, I've got freaking loads of it, absolutely loads of it. I'm, I'm yeah, I'm cool. happy. To help. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. No, you no, to, no, that's no you, don't, you don't have to worry about that, mate. I'm not asking for anything for you that. Know, so I've been. Only buying live ammo for so many years, I wouldn't even know where to buy a blank in my life. You know. Yeah, and, I, and it's it's creeping up. A blank is creeping up in price. But I think for th- right, how how much is live three or three per round? Let's say. Well, um, I mean, I mainly reload, so obviously that's. Oh, okay, yeah, price. but but no, but when I do buy commercial, I usually buy like PPU in the UK. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're talking probably about seventy, eighty pence a pop. Blank is creep. Blank is probably actually probably more in some cases, which is crazy. What really? Yeah, yeah, honestly, like um, I think um, seven nine two Mauser per round is maybe a quid, quid fifty, depending on who you go to. But blank. But there's no expensive bit that flies out. What, I know, that? I know. It's because it's because it's more, especially in the UK, it's more sought after because um, with especially for film lot as well because they use. Oh, okay. Of, okay. Right, so they put up prices. <laughs> as far as I'm aware, like from speaking to people who've bought loads in the past. They're like it's it's getting pricey. Like, yeah, seven nine two for example is very expensive when considering to like anything you else. You do you do German, didn't you as well? Yeah, sometimes yeah. yeah. And I've got a friend, uh, a couple of friends who um have like uh, section five licenses and that, and they say yeah, like buying blank is expensive. So like when you can get um, blanks for armourers, it's not too bad. So um, <laughs> that was just a lucky thing. Like I think it was. They gave us like like six hundred rounds per Bren. We had two Brens, whatever it was for for this was at Chalk Valley. And they're like, oh yeah, here's. So I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> I just loaded the films. Like, what do we do with it? We can't take it back because they've closed up the the thing. So like, anyone got bag space? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, just in, take yeah, yeah. See, yeah. I was really lucky with a lot of my rifles. Um, I was working with um, Euro Arms in Italy when they won yeah. the contract with the Italian. To, to buy the uh, 10,000 Lee Enfield to the Italian Navy. Oh, what, what? Italian Navy? Yeah, yeah. In wow. fact, I've got eight of my <clears throat> are from the Italian Navy. Wow. So what happened was after World War Two, obviously the Italian army... Oh, yeah, 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 no, no, okay, yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. You know, and of course there was the Cold War and um, the Italians were obviously NATO. Yeah. They needed to be rearmed. So I think the military, the, the army... Um, we're mainly using the M1 Garands. Yeah, yeah. Um, the Navy um, all had Lee Enfields. So, wow. uh, so what happened is um, they were literally shipped over in crates and yeah. stuck on ships where they stayed until uh, they were kind of a few, they were still <clears throat> in use until a few years ago. I could actually I'll dig it out somewhere. I've got That's a crazy. photo of literally I think about 2012 of Italian sailors all, you know, all doing present arms with number one Mark threes. That's insane. But what happened is when they were officially decommissioned, they started selling these off and Euro Arms won the, the bid and they won the bid for 10,000. And I was 
working with them at the time. And um, that, I got some, obviously, some, some perks of the job. <laughs> some, of, some of the some of my rarer rifles, like you know, like my long lees and uh, you know the number one Mot ones, you know, literally because of that for prices that make you cry. That's so cheap. <laughs> That's insane. Um, and uh, in Italy, uh, you're paying about four hundred to five hundred euro for a, a really good Enfield. That's not bad. I was expecting it. To work. So when I left Italy. I sold a load. I kept the rarer ones, but I thought, well, the, the more common, like the standard number four Mark ones, number one Mark threes, you know, I can I can buy them. I'll sell them in Italy. Buy them here. Come on, it's it's, it's England, mm. the home. <laughs> You've got the T-shirt. Come on. <laughs> and yet, here yeah, they are so much more expensive. So much more expensive. Yeah, but it's ridiculous. Like this because you reminded me about de about demand. Talking about blank. Mm. It's all about demand. Um, in Italy, you don't have um, slots, so you can buy as many rifles as you want, <coughs> and that brings the prices of course here. Yeah. You have to have a slot every time, you have to put in for a variation. It really limits the number of weapons you can have. Yeah, because is it five? I can't, I can't remember what the regular. I don't know what the. No, it's until the police just don't, don't trust you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I mean, every time you buy a rifle, you have to justify it. Now, um, I had a bit of a hard time. Um, justifying my Enfields because they were like, well, why do you want the same, so many of the same rifle? So I really had to explain and yeah. show them that I was a member of the Lee Enfield Rifle Association. I'm doing competition shooting. There's various categories within that. I mean, different, yeah. different rifles. And even then, they gave me a hard time. Um, and have actually told me not to even get in touch with them for at least a year. So, <laughs> 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 Which is quite good because all the money I've spent now on, uh, on this second hobby... <laughs> <laughs> but but now I can do a proper um, uh, I, I can do a Liam for you know a, a, a Liam for Rifle Association competition with full World War Two kit exactly you know? and it's going to look amazing of course <laughs> but that, that's that's what like, that's why I like watching the um, British Muscle Owners channel oh Rob brilliant yeah Rob from because like I love because he's doing historical shooting in a really great location in full kit and it's like that looks really really good. It's well, great. Actually, actually, he saw my lockdown, my, my first lockdown video from newbie to battle dress. And he yeah. actually said, "Good job. It's a long, slippery slope to his." <laughs> yeah. No, I did. I saw that comment actually. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, ha, ha, like that. <laughs> but I think it would be cool. I mean, because uh, so I'm a member of Lira, Liam Le for Rifle Association. We do yeah. a lot of really cool, really cool shoots like um, Leanfield Challenge, um, close quarter battle CQB. Where you're like, you know, in movement, you know, snap shooting, you know, targets up two seconds down, three yeah. shots per target, that sort of thing. So you do a lot of this sort of really kind of fun, um, not static shooting. So it would yeah, be cool yeah. to do that as well <laughs> in uniform, mm. you know. Thing is, like, I think, uh, especially like, after a while, you've, because I did um, was an event a couple of years ago at, uh, it's, it's where they filmed um, The Eagles Landed, where the, the, the manor house where the American um, HQ is. Yeah. Um, it's also right. thing. Um, Maple Durham. Um, yeah, it's, it's where they filmed with the Eagles Landed. It's a really, really, really cool location. You've got the village and everything in there. And the whole village is incorporated within the whole event as well. Um, sadly, they don't do the event anymore, but like the whole village. And we did like patrols around the village and that. Um, cool. <laughs> I was, we, I was uh, with a um, group who did like World War II commandos at the time. <laughs> I, was in, I was in full battle dress. With battle jerkin on, carrying the Bren gun, um, and it was wet, and, <laughs> and it was it was wet, and muggy, it was horrible, it was absolutely horrible. <laughs> I literally had to just drop down. Someone else took the Bren for a while. I was like, I can't do this. This is this is stupid. Well, I've heard that this weekend, so, like, so I'm at um, Kentwell War and Peace War and Peace <laughs> yeah. Regiment. Uh, it's going to be my first time in battle dress. Mm. Um, I, I heard it's going to be stupidly hot mm. so that's going to be interesting although to tell you the truth i've done many years of 18th century mm. and that red coat and yeah. those woolen woolen breeches and waistcoats <laughs> man so we'll see but at the same point i didn't have 37 pattern webbing have a sack yeah yeah and number four, which weighs the same as a, as, as a brown best so but i'll say uh, i'm up with a bunch of and i think every single person in the red room was about a quarter of my age so it's gonna come on, Granddad, and be like, 
<laughs> you should have a little name tag on saying Jones. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think really after this, I should be changing my supper badge to Home Guard. You know, <laughs> young in spirit, you know. <laughs> you said that I'm a new guy, but now I'm not on the right edge for the I'm right edge for Sergeant Major. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little bit cool, Sergeant Major. Just to use it now. <laughs> but going back to uh, the, the the kit we're sourcing, obviously, and it's really cool that you're also, f um, you know, taking it to the next level with Monty's men, so that you know you yeah. can, you know, you know, I don't feel alone doing this <laughs> but um what is it you think is what what are you really missing or are you like me think, almost there just a few details yeah i think missing missing why is it's um uh I, I would like to get another um colorless shirt if i can um maybe a repro if i have to but if i can find another original great but that was like once in a million chance fine to us with that um underwear um like we talked about earlier that's going to be sort of a thing to get and um i did make a list but i keep forgetting it but uh no like paperwork really as well i think same with you i'm gonna i bought the sof one but i'm gonna try and um wait out for the um atlas ones as well yeah yeah cool. and um other little bits here and there i need to get my boots rehobbed though that's that's one major thing i need to do um i'm gonna get them rehobbed probably next month I um, SOF do um, the right kind of round hobs for wartime. Well, let me show you. So I've got two pairs of boots. I've yeah. got some, the ones in the, my video, which were, which um, I think they're original, they're, but they're a little bit big. Yeah. Um, the hobs aren't correct. It's kind of not correct. But I also, ended, I also bought some SOF ones. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, once again, is there some something wrong with them? I'm not quite sure, but I I'll show you them. You know, I think that they look the dogs. Oh, the SOF ones. Yeah, these are SOF. Okay. I mean, they look solid as hell. I mean, I'm gonna take my other ones in case there is something wrong with them and they fall apart after. after but they look. They look all right. Good. It's the um, it's the toe cap pebbled. Uh, they're the um the. Uh... Toe cap itself, the leather is it pebbled leather? Um, not 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 pebbled pebbled no. Yeah. It's not smooth smooth either. Yeah, because this, this this is pebbled. See, this is all pebbled. Yeah, yeah. Where's my official thing? Um, yeah. I mean, so apparently, this, um... apparently, even this screw missing here is supposed to be correct as part of the um. Okay. Economy thing, but. I don't know. I mean, I'm going to give them a try this weekend. Yeah, exactly. It's worth a try. There will be some purists that say, oh, no. Mate, it's... It, end of the day, like, I've, I've seen people, like, who've been doing it for years, though, like, especially in, like, the... Not, obviously, not what he's done, but, like, a general thing. They, um... They're very, very bad sins, but, no. Honestly, mate, like, they, they look actually really right. So, this is one of them... This is actually, I think, from the 1980s, I think. I think it was the 1980s one. Something like that. Um, what the hell's that in there? Oh, sorry. Um, so it's still. Um... Dead mouse. What's that in there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> no, it was. It was the. Um, it was probably one of the. Uh, um, I had like a rubber insole thing in there. Spot my foot. But um, no, the even on these eighty ones, actually, the um, toe cap is pebbled. Um, so obviously it's pebbled at the top, but it's faint pebbling. They do on the toe cap, and on the heel. Just, yeah, this this yeah. doesn't look really smooth. But I don't think it's pebbled. Um, but also, I do. But you know, you've got these. the correct thirteen studs at the bottom. Yeah. Off. Mm. And it was, I think, it was less studs as the war went on as well. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, I have a pair of these though. What do you think these are? Those are the commander boots, aren't they? Yeah, the yeah the SVs. Yeah. I got these for fifty quid off someone on Facebook. Brilliant. <laughs> Yeah, and you don't, uh, the, you don't see them around, do you? No, no, you don't. These are these are in a size, I think twelve or eleven. I can't remember. But yeah, they're so nice, and they're they're really really like deep pedal, pedaling. They they fit so nice there. They're so comfortable. Like, well, I mean, I've worn these around the house a few times, and they're bloody comfortable. But I, I, the, the proof will be in the uh, the pudding. Yeah, definitely. And um, I'm also taking my other pair with me, but like I said, they're just slightly bigger. Yeah, uh, and and. Um, just as an just as an emergency, and I've got time to with a few events yeah. to pick yeah. out 
but so far I'm happy. The other thing that repro wise is obviously is my gas cape. Yeah, that's that's a good one. Is that is that one from um That's what price glory one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that might have got from there as well. Apparently their ones, their gas are probably one of the best in the market for re- for repros. You know, so then you so like, stay away from them except for this. Stay away from them except Yeah, yeah, it's, it's I think it's the same with a lot of places. Like with SRF, some of the stuff they do is really good. Well, I mean like, uh, in the Montes um kit regulations they're saying, you know, uh, for example for the pullovers, they said yeah. uh, SOF do an amazing one. Yeah, and there's another one. It's, um, it's called Bullets and Bayonets or something like. That. There's another couple. They do pull. They do the pullovers. They look, look quite good. I haven't seen any like um, reviews on them in that, but I'm gonna have a look. But uh, I've got a pullover myself from um, someone on Facebook was selling one for like thirty odd quid or something like that, um, which she used in a, a a film or something. I don't know. Yeah, so I thought, oh, I love that. And, and it's, well, I was literally. It was it was, it was, it was, it was handmade, so. Well, I mean, if it wasn't for um, what price glory Central Europe, this being absolute idiots and not answering emails, yeah, I would have ended up buying one of them and missing out on the real one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sometimes there are some pros in it, though. <laughs> oh, there's, I am missing the contents. I'm not not the contents with me. Um, with this, so I've got the. I mean, I've got the respirator. Yeah. I've also got a Mark V respirator. Yeah. Hi. Yeah, we're gonna. Yeah. I'll, I'll be going soon because it's. No, no, it's not, right? It's James. Hello. Hi. <laughs> so I, uh, so I'm gonna be. I've, but I've got the, the gas ointment and the other bits and pieces in my Mark V respirator. So I'm just gonna stick that yeah. in this. So I'm yeah, it's fine. Yeah, this is the same with same with me with the um with the uh, light respirator as well. I've just got to get a canister and, a, and the and the accoutrements for it. That's actually yeah, that's something I've got to get the all the accoutrements and the and the extra um, uh, identity disc as well that's got attached to it and all that sort of stuff as well. Oh yeah, yeah, of course, identity disc. Um, How many pairs? Yeah. Whatever, three or something, isn't it? One for the. Sorry, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I just got in trouble with having the the, the, the bed. <laughs> but um, but yeah, no, um, no things like that, and then that's how that's my lovely, lovely pact. <laughs> yep, yep. Nice and tight packs. Wait a second, let me show you mine. Nice, nice. <laughs> but um, what was I saying? Right, mate, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna move on downstairs because. No, mate. Right. Say no, mate. Say no. Hello. And Jake. He's got the same name as your brother, hasn't he? Yeah. Do you want to show him Baby Yoda? Yeah. It's Baby Yoda. <laughs> I'm getting some seriously bad looks from the wife, so I'm going to go downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> but um, AB64, actually, like the ones from SRF, I don't think are that bad, so that's the sort of the cover. That's the SRF one, yeah? Yeah. Hang on, turn on the light. That doesn't look bad at all. I honestly I don't I don't know that like it's good because they because they, they um because they they said about Atlas and then there's another company they said about as well they are but their AB64 is exactly the same as the SOF one in the way of like the layout of the pages the only difference with the Atlas one is they've got the inventory at the start from what you're issued right. I don't believe that's in the SOF one as far as I've seen but I might have missed it. Yeah, I think that's the only difference. That that the Atlas one is probably well, maybe some minor little things about how it's printed and that. But end of the day, it's going to be with in your pocket within a um, anti-gas cover anyway. So yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Oh, there's my number four. Nice. That's there's my number three. Well, not three. What about your number four? Number four. Oh, you're, you're gonna be you're gonna be renting one, aren't you? Because yeah, yeah. I'm not in the lucky club. <laughs> yeah. I told you you should join the club. Yeah, no, I, I honestly will be when when everything comes out with lockdown and all that stuff off that properly. So I think next year there'll definitely be something I'll be doing. 
because yeah. I'd really love to, and I've always wanted to. So I don't know. It's, it's great, you know. <laughs> so this one here, this is 1944. Oh, that's nice. It's a it's a long branch, so it's a Canadian one. Oh, yeah, mine's a um, mine's a savage one. Um, trying to think of it. Hmm. That's a fun actually. A, a friend of mine. Um, actually, I'll have that singer. I'll have that um that sight off of it for you. you. You don't need it. You're not really shooting, so give me that. <laughs> yes, yeah, nice. Uh, yeah. You've you, you got you got the proper one. My, mine's the not quite as posh. Uh, yeah, the the, Amer the Yanks did something right. <laughs> <laughs> At least they kept that sorry. No, no for money, mate. No for money. <laughs> no, but um, no. A friend of mine who owns a um, shop down in Weymouth um, put it up, and I was like, I I'll have that. So <laughs> I've been after that before for years. But uh, yeah. How does it work with the X? I've never, I mean, I've never needed to own one. So um, it, it's. Laws are getting more and more, and the, and the um, deactivation, deactivation style and all that is always getting a bit weird. Um, there's some even you can't even open the breach. You, you can't like, do anything with them. They're basically just solid pieces of metal that have been welded to bugger. But it depends on who's deactivated them, and depends how far they go with the um, deactivation laws from well, either the UK or the EU. Really, over the past few years, it's got more ridiculous. Yes, uh, but. My number one mark three star. Yeah, was... excuse me. I'm going to move up into the kids' bedroom because yes, right. there's a washing machine going on. I've got a living room full of Italians. <laughs> got cats. The bedroom. <laughs> Welcome to my world. It's all right, mate. I'm going to the kids' bedroom. Close the door. Yeah. No, my, my number one mark three, my, my dad picked it up in the, I think it was the 80s or the 90s, whatever, for like 100 quid. Um, but now number number one mark three Diax are going for like five, six hundred. What? Depending depending what it is. Number, number, four, mark, number four mark one T's are 15 to 2,000 or more, depending. Well, I mean, okay, so... I've got friends in Italy that have got number four Mark One, no, you know, num, number four Mark One T's original with with the original chest, yeah, and uh, accessories. I mean, they they are silly prices, but the silly prices there, they're impossible prices here. Yeah, it's insane. But there was there's a mock put together in Fulton's uh, for four and a half grand. Bloody hell! It's a mock. It is. It's an it's a normal number four Mark One with, where they've added you know an original scope and that sort of thing. And yeah. Can't work. But that's the sort of prices you're going for mock-ups. Yeah, that's the that's a shame because it, that it's like it's nice and all, but that you sort of think that rifle wasn't sent to Holland and Holland it wasn't. Yeah, yeah didn't go through the special testing. Ah, oh, that's a shame. Well, yeah, I'll tell you a, quick, a it, quick horror story. So a friend of mine, when he was serving in the Italian Navy, oh, by the way, anyone knows if anyone sees this video, talk about Italy because I lived there for twenty years. And my wife's Italian. That's why I've got a house full of Italians at the moment. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but so a friend of mine, good friend He's of mine. trafficking Italians. Yes, <laughs> I'm, I'm an Italian trafficker. <laughs> Although after the wife crashed the car today, I'm not particularly fond of them. So anyway, but that's another story. But um, so the story is um, when he was when he was serving, um, they because of course as I mentioned before they had you know thousands and thousands of of Lee Enfields because they were issued them you know yeah uh, especially for the Italian Navy but also the Army they weren't just Garands. So what they had. Um, they, they they wanted the scopes off of the number four T's to put on their on their uh, AR seventies. Oh Christ! So they did. They took the scopes off all of these. They had like warehouses full of number four T's. No, no. They put them on, and do you know what they did with the rifles and the crates? What did they do? They lined them up on the floor and with a tracked vehicle. Oh no! Yes, my friend uh -oh. saw. He, he, he apparently is still in therapy. <laughs> <laughs> over that I, I, I think I'd be I think I'd, I'd be locked in the rubber room if I saw that and there are um, Enfield trainers that have got Garand rear sights added to them to train what? the troops in 2-2 two -two. Enfield 2-2 two -two trainers like number 9s that sort of thing yeah yeah, yeah. and they've had uh, um, Garand rear sights welded to them because they're using them to train them because then the the the, 
the troops were then using the Garand. Yeah, that is. Oh, that's that's that's, that's, that's heresy. They decided to use the BM sixty nine, etc. etc. But um, yeah, it was horror horror stories. But like I said, the good thing is when these rifles were, um, you know, when the Navy finally said maybe we should stop using Lee Enfields because it's like you know twenty first century. Yeah. <laughs> they then they they went on the market and you know I, I had some I've got some really great guns out of it. That's great. But that's I was the same with the Italian Navy. That's like the um, what, the Canadian Rangers, as well, because they they went to the Tico what a few years ago. Well, I think, I think that they they would have still been quite happy to carry on using the number. Yeah, yeah. But it was just becoming impossible to keep servicing them. They were, yeah. I think they were. I mean, bloke on the range talks about them, you know, um, about a lot of it because he's got a Tico. Yeah, a lot of story on that. I think he did a video on that, and a lot of it seems to have been. That they were having to butcher so many rifles now just to keep one going, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, mm. whereas with the um, with the Italian rifles, once the ten thousand were off the market and sold, yeah. Um, the only ones that were left were the crap, the bottom of the barrel. <coughs> you know where they went? Where? In the UK. <laughs> so, for example, cranks. Yeah. All of their Enfields. Are the bottom of the barrel from Euro Arms? Christ! And they cost about twice as much as what you pay for a decent one in Italy. It's just, that's just insane, mate. It's no, just... I think it's, I think it's kind of funny that you know the Brits sent sent them over the rifles, and then um, and the Italians are taking the piss. And the yeah. And the crap. <laughs> <laughs> so and, and the back and another it, yeah? one, which is unfortunate, is um, for example, Worldwide Arms. Yeah. They were buying thousands from from Italy uh, mm. to be deact deactivated. Yeah. yeah, and it's like with like I think there was a lot of um, especially coming well before obviously the referendum and all that. Even yours may may have been from the Italian Navy in the act. A lot, I would be surprised actually, but um, I, I um I've got the certificates in one of the drawers. It was the activated five six years ago, so possibly. Possibly, I mean, for example, the ones that they couldn't find matching matching bolts for, the ones that got shot out barrels that they, yeah. they that they couldn't sell. Yeah, they were, they, they, they were then selling them on to, and Euro Arms are the contract with Worldwide Arms. Yeah, uh, I don't know who they are. I, you probably do Worldwide Arms. But apparently yeah, I, 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 bought, I bought um, a couple of bayonets from them before, so yeah, so not, they, they, not they too buy... to do for that side of it, but the DX side of it is still quite high-ish. Yeah. So, well, I mean, I mean, the Enfields I would sell to be deactivated were obviously they had to be pretty. Yeah, yeah, you know. So the, the Italian rifles, you had a bit of a mix of, 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 of the number fours were spotless because they were literally in crates since just after the Second World War. In yeah. fact, the ones I got originally, my, my first two, they all had the, the original armourers tag on them still. Wow. You know, when they were clean, checked, put in crates and sent to Italy in about 1947, something like that. Mm. Um, whereas the number one Mark threes all have good barrels because they were never really shot, but they're bashed to hell because they were used uh, for square bashing yeah. by the Navy. Yeah. So, you know, like I said, working with them, I was lucky enough. Sword belt looks better on parade than a spike, so. <laughs> I'll dig that photo out, and I'm not joking. I think it was about 2012 with the Italian Navy, you know, all there with a, you know. That's crazy. Present arms. That's good. I'm actually, that's something something I did find actually interesting whilst in lockdown. I think I was watching um, it was Queen one of the Queen's birthday things. I was watching it as the, when they were doing it from inside Windsor Castle, or, or wherever it was, or yeah, something along that lines. I was looking looking at what the um, the uh, band uh, the bandsmen and that and the um, uh, drummers uh, from the Guards Division, and for their sidearm bayonet, they have. Um, uh, number sevens was it number sevens number nines, number nines. The, um, the twist lock yeah um, blade yeah yeah blade one yeah as uh, the side bayonet which I thought oh that's very very odd yeah <laughs> yeah it was it, yeah because I was been... pushing, I was like oh that's wow okay <laughs> I, I asked people around they said it was very very strange but yeah a few years ago they took it on because they, obviously they used to have um, the they used to use the 1907 sword bayonet as their sidearm for the for the bandsmen and that, yeah. and then they went over to that apparently some years ago. I, I think aesthetics wasn't it more than anything. Yeah, 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 because they they wanted sort of a longish bayonet, but still with like 
because the um, L85 banner isn't exactly very ceremonial in that sort of way of appearance. I don't know. Yeah, it just it was something I sort of caught. I was like, oh, okay. I have to confess, when it comes to anything after the Lee Enfield, I know nothing about it, and I don't really... It doesn't <laughs> float my boat. But I do have, and I do love it, I've got an SLR. Yeah. You know, um, but mine's as God intended it, which is why I had to leave it at my mother-in-law's in Italy. So yeah, yeah. I only now get to shoot that when we go back to see the, the in-laws. Yeah. Um, a friend of mine from Lira said, why don't you bring it over and have it converted to straight ball? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> back, <laughs> demon. <laughs> Although I've seen straight ball SLRs are like two grand or something. I know that they're insane. Like, even DX are like, because uh, I, I found there was a, it might have been World Wide Arms, actually. It was at War and Peace, last, War and Peace show last year, the one that's in Kent, the massive one. Um, they had a really, really nice SLR, um, but early DX, so still cock it, dry fire it, and all that sort of stuff, which is good for a DX these days. Um, you can still remove the bank clean and everything. With a suit site, um, which was still working, um, which still, ha- I think they might have taken it to a thing to have the um, it refilled or gassed or something like that, whatever you do with that, I can't remember. Um, and they were asking, <laughs> I think it was two and a half thousand for it. Right, so I bought mine for 600 euro. <laughs> what? Live fire, semi-auto. Oh, Italy sounds lovely. <laughs> you, know, uh, uh, you know, BSA, uh, BSA, you know, uh, you know um, 1969. That's that's crazy. That's, that's just that's crazy. The price. That's the price to go for. Mine's got plastic furniture on it. Um, um, if you want to change it back to the wooden furniture, it costs you probably about, um, uh, set's probably about 150 quid over there, 150 euro. Wow! I use the SLR a lot during the cadets. So, yeah. I and I had when I when I was shooting it then I had it with plastic furniture. So, <laughs> I was, so even though uh, as a 1969 rifle that would have originally of course had the wooden furniture, but yeah. no, 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 there, there was no way I was going to convert that. No. <laughs> Plus, how can I? Okay, I love Lee Enfield. There's nothing nicer than the feel of that bolt, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing nicer. However, there's nothing nicer than the feel of the semi-auto, the spring, yeah. the movement, the gas. The, you know, it's just, it's just a great feeling. So, bang, and then cocking it, I think it would just be more frustrating. Yeah. I think it would be akin to driving a Ferrari stuck in first gear. <laughs> but that's my, only, that's my opinion. Um, I'm sure, I, and other people obviously, you know, they don't care because they like it, and they've not got that choice. I had the possibility to own one in Italy. I've still got it. Yeah. You know, go home. It's the first thing I caress. You know, give it a cuddle. Yeah, yeah. As you said, like it, it, to me, it'd be like taking an F1 car to go shopping in. It's not going to yeah. work, and it doesn't. It's not great. But it's not what it was made for. <laughs> which actually, to kind of regress to where we started off, which is obviously about the kit. Um, I kind of got. A little bit intrigued about reenacting after I'd completed my lockdown hobby. Yeah. Because I thought, well, I've got all this stuff. I'd like to occasionally wear it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, so. And uh, well, this weekend, let's see. <laughs> Definitely, mate. Definitely. But like, um, again, like the kit, like I'm just sort of opening the. Um... Yeah, sorry, I can't. I can't grab mine at the moment because the kids go. No, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Like, uh, like because you said you have like cap comforter and all that sort of stuff, and you said. Right, you'd... Well, I am missing. So let me give you the exact list of that I'm missing. <clears throat> that um, what you know, I am now missing a cap comforter. I was missing the pullover. I've got that. I was missing a great coat. I've got that. I've got all my small kit. So I'm missing a cap comforter, gloves. Mm. I'm missing. Um, a scarf, but when they say scarf, I'm not quite sure what they mean because I've got the scrim scarf. <clears throat> yeah, there's the scarf, and then there's because scrim scarf is sort of a is for sort of um, concealment and that when on patrol and that sort of thing. Um, and very, very good when it's hot to put around the neck if you wet it as well. The scarf is a separate piece, it's basically sort of just a wooden scarf, really, for like cold weather and all that sort of stuff. But it's not really necessary, really, in my view. Um, I think if you just um, yeah, I don't. It's not really because, because you can fit so much into the small pack, but not too much. Mm. Well, I would say then that I could probably get away with doing Monty's men tomorrow, if I could source quickly the um, the documentation, mm. and sort my shirts out. Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah. You know, and what I want is because, as I mentioned, I, I like to have the originals because it's not just a case of being re a real. Yeah. Yeah, you want, to, you want to be able to sort of appreciate that you've got something. In fact, keep, keep an eye out. If you do see any shirts, I know you're looking for a second one, so don't worry after that. After your second <laughs> That's one. Right. That's and if you do come across any original shirts, just, just let me know. Like, yeah. like the help you gave me with the battle dress. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Well, to us, with the shirt, if I do find one, I will send it your way to us, you. Because um, I think, if anything, I'll get a repro one as a second, probably. Um, just so I've got that as things there. So, um, yeah, no, I think I'll quickly show you. Um, not the shirt, but it's the little esque display. I think is it showing. There we go. That's cool. a shiny belt as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's the um, yeah, that's oh, that's the one I was looking for. Yeah, so there's that one I got to shine in, and then that's the uh, one I got uh, really, really shiny. That is really, really shiny. That that took a while. <laughs> <laughs> that was quite nice. The one I found actually good few years ago, actually. Um, and then the sort of little Hampshire shrine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, Compass, this one here, so 19, uh, 1941, uh, TG Co. London. Interesting. Nice. That was a nice little find from the mate I got my rifle from, as my number four as well. 1940s GPS. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, this is the other, because how many, oh, I've got what, two or three auto strops now? Well, that... yeah, I've got one of yours. <laughs> <laughs> so that one, which was a nice little find. I think I'll put the thing there. So this one. Um, what with the uh, uh, strop in there as well? Yeah, cause, cause one. the one I got from you, uh, that was missing the, um, the leather strop, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. And then... It's not that I'm not going to shave enough to need to, to, to shave. <laughs> no, exactly, exactly. I think... I, I, I don't ah. know... Yeah, you just reminded me of something. I've just seen those... Um... The, the the mess tins. So they're wrong, aren't they? I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they are. Um I I have got an original pair but I would not eat from them at all. At all. Um so uh, I've got I've got I originally thought I'm okay because I've also I've got a pair of MMS nineteen forty five steel ones. Yeah. Which of course is jungle, which I didn't know at the time. And I thought, oh yeah. great, that's good, I'm gonna get them. I then discovered that they don't look good, and I do now now have some steel 943. Um, I think if I do eat from them, though, I will probably die. Yeah. Um, but then again, I'm not a millennial, so you know. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Health and safety, fuck it. <laughs> I'm not joking. I I, I wire wool, I wire wooled off a bit of rust. I'm yeah. Worried. Got it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh. On Monday when I'm in the hospital, like, why the hell did I say that? You know. <laughs> next thing you knew, he was waking up and next to a next to a drip. <laughs> yeah, well, Kevin, what did you say? <laughs> you, you I, just have millennials? It on, yeah. I have it on recording. You said this. <laughs> oh, uh, like my little um, because <clears throat> obviously at the start of the whole Monday thing, Monday them thing, they were originally going to do Raw Scots, um, originally. Yeah. Um, so I thought, oh, I, 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 just, I found like, the patches and lines were fairly cheap, so I thought, I'll get those. So, and obviously then they changed, so I thought, I use them to make in my uh, mirror cover. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Well, I just spent like a little, well, what, like 20, 30 minutes just like, oh, I'll just get the same kit out and just do that. Because I, I, I was looking at mirror covers, and I thought, eh, no, I'll get my, just make my own. Yeah. Yeah. Just make sure I don't get it out with all, all the KSOB stuff. Was that no? <laughs> oh, I've also got a, I've also got a nineteen forty three safety razor, just a normal uh, with. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I was, I was checking about that because I was <coughs> sure because I had that, um, <coughs> and I, that was one of those silly little eBay finds from somebody <coughs> that obviously didn't know what it was. I think I paid like seven quid for it. It's nineteen forty three. I was worried that it might be the one that um, Rifle Memoir was saying was yeah, the aluminium ones, all like the nineteen forty three, and it doesn't look like it's stainless steel. I think it's cast, so I think it should be okay as well. Yeah, but yeah. I like the auto strop. I like it. Yeah. It's just so cool. No, they are they are really cool. And this this was another one I found as well on um, eBay. Uh, I got this. I got this one with my um, the Viceroy. Um, uh, Self-electric razor, so I think I showed you this one already. No, 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 I haven't seen that. Show us that. And is that like World War Two or something? Uh, yeah, I think yeah, but it was a sort of late, like yeah, sort of nineteen forties, sort of um, and then fifties. But I think because voice 
They had a lecture. I didn't even know they had a lecture of razors back then. But it's, it's like a hand one. Oh, yeah. There's like a little cover. That's insane. That I saw it, and it actually, honestly, it, it, it cut. Yeah, it cuts better. I've I've cleaned it all out as well, so I I took it I took it apart the head and all that, and I cleaned it probably thoroughly because it had loads of gunk and stuff in it. But um, honestly, it cuts better than some of my modern ones. <laughs> that is amazing. It's great. It's really, really cool. So what one are you going to use at Montes? So this. Oh shoot. So this one I found this one. Well, this one came with this, so all for so this and that was fifteen quid off eBay. Wow. That was not bad. So that's the all uh, the users as well. well. This razor as well. Oh, so yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. Well, I told you I had my first shave with my one. <laughs> yeah, I did, and I didn't change the blades. So I had no idea who shaved it before me, but I, I went for it. Like <laughs> I said, I ain't a millennial. <laughs> 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 Blood poisoning. Hey, come on. <laughs> that, <that's>, who's that? <laughs> but it works. And it works. then this part lifts up out. I think a yeah, little box which has all the blades in. I went through and checked all the blades. All the blades are like pristine, clean on this one as well. I was like, oh great. Um, and then if I think that lifts up, I think. Oh, there we go. I think... Where is it going? Uh, we can get it out. There we go. That flips up. Oh, cool. And then the auto shop's inside, which is in like mint condition. Hang on, are you are you sure you're not an officer at Monty's Men? And, and not... <laughs> Sir, <laughs> my my dad went out this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my Batman? <laughs> yeah, and it's it's still got even like the. Uh... No, that's that is cool. I, I saw. It, I was like, oh my god. <laughs> See, that's the thing. When I started this whole thing, I was thinking, what's the most I'm going to be learning about? Maybe the different types of battle dress. And now I'm sitting here, like, a couple of months later, <laughs> discussing the different types of razors. It's like, <laughs> so this is the next type of razor. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I'm now doing my thesis on, you know, it's my PhD on... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> He's a sharp one, this one. Yeah. But listen, what did you do with trousers then? Because, I mean, obviously, you've got an original austerity just like mine. Um, and I've got... oh, my ones are like three or four sizes too small. So I've um, bought a pair from um, Reenactment Supplies, who uh, is, I think he's on my section, actually, the guy um, who owns it. So I've got a... then I'd like to say, I'd like to see Monty's men say, you're not allowed to use that if the guy... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I, I, as far as I'm aware, like, I, I, they, they, he um, got... Um, the cloth and that from Panther Store as well, as far as I'm aware. Just the same thing. So, um, as far as I'm aware, he's quite good. So, uh, I've got it, two choices. Well, not I haven't got the two choices yet, but I'm still on the waiting list for what price can I get? Yeah. Uh, Pro. Um, and I've also got the original. I yeah. was tempted to cancel my what price, what price glory, um, uh, Century Europe kit, as soon as I've now got an original, but. <coughs> Yeah. Reading that art, that thing they put the, the file they put in on Battle Dress about do you really want to lie in a puddle in your originals? Yeah. I'm yeah. not sure. The trout of the jackets that'll stand up to anything, it's brand yeah. new, literally. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, so that's why I ordered the trousers. My trousers are 1943 original, and whilst they've got <laughs> not got any damage now, I'm not sure I want to add to that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. We'll see, we'll see what happens. Like I said, what price, glory? I mean, they've stopped, they're not answering emails. I mean, maybe there's just like too many people. No, but so yeah, you know, I'm not, so. I'm, not sure, I'm not sure. One minute I get tempted to say sod it, I'll just yeah, yeah. But you just I'll, sort I'll of like hope, pray. <laughs> but at the same point, maybe yeah, six months down the line they'll say do you want it. In six months down the line, I might be, I might be able to afford it again because yeah. <laughs> I ran out of things to buy. Yeah, so that, that's uh, that's why I went for a sort of reenactment surprise because I spoke to him, sort of um, had a quick conversation with him about stuff, and he was like, yeah, yeah, of course, this sort. Of... And he said it's, it's very, very good stuff. I was like, okay, cool, cool, I'll, I'll go for it. So paid and it's like about about twelve twelve months uh, sorry um not twelve months about a twelve week probably wait because while it's being made so I was like oh yeah that, that's fine that's fine I was a paper and they know it's coming so I spoke to him about a couple of weeks ago he said probably about another month or so I said that's fine that's roughly sort of how long he said it would take anyway so so and he said he'll message me very very um about a week or so before and that and so I was like oh great. So it, it's looking good. At least there's correspondence there. And the yeah. fact that he's in my section, or I think he's in my section or platoon, it's easy to keep things. You know, so, yeah. Oh, how's it going with your 
section. So I've got a, so I, I'm in one section, nine for two. Yeah, uh, we've, got, we've got our own WhatsApp group, and we swear at each other every day and helping each other <laughs> out and getting that sort of thing. How's it going with seven? Yeah, really, really good actually. So yeah, so I'm in, I'm in obviously first platoon. Uh, so yeah, uh, seventh platoon, uh, one section as well. Um, so now I've had some good, good, good chat with people actually, um, and obviously with the guys doing my trousers, we could chat with them, and um, no, it's actually going really well. I think I've got the group here somewhere. Where's my phone gone? Well, most of mine. I mean, two, two, two of two of the guys in my section are serving um, in the Dutch army. Oh wow! Oh yeah, no, I think I met the one. We got one Danish. We got one Danish soldier. Yeah. Um, Section commanders, Royal Engineers. Oh wow! And I'm I'm, and I'm Dad's army. (laughs) (laughs) Bringing on, bringing on the half-time oranges. (laughs) Bringing on the stretcher for me, I think. (laughs) (laughs) But um, oh, where's that? Yeah, so I think, I think on your, I think. Nine, are you, you're nine, aren't you? You said nine. I think in your um platoon, uh, a couple of my mates actually. Um, you've got Max, uh, his second name is Barber. Um, I, I think he's in third, I think he might be in third, um, third sec. Uh, three. I really okay. So we've got a Facebook page for nine platoon, yeah. And then- and then it's individual WhatsApp pages. For yeah, yeah, for each section, yeah. WhatsApp groups for each section. I have not had any interaction with anybody outside my section. Okay. So I don't know who else is there. The only guy, the only other person I met from Monty's, apart from you, is Tom, who's seven platoon leader. Yeah, okay. He was, uh, at, okay. He was at uh, Rich's Museum the other day. He, uh, he, I think he volunteers, helps out with it. Oh, brilliant. I'll get you in contact with a couple of guys, because I think, I think a couple of my mates are on... Um, are in nine are in nine platoon, so I'll get in contact with them. So, uh, yeah. because they're they're they get they've obviously started from your point as well with like the SOF stuff as well, and yeah. sort of actually with me really as well really. Um, well, in fact, we've got one guy uh, in my section who's even more of a newbie than me now. Yeah, and we're helping him source everything from scratch. <laughs> it's it's yeah. great. Sort of like it's need this. It's, it's, it, it, it is really it is fun to do it, and like, and it is great to help people as well. Especially this, because you're it's you're learning as you're helping as well, which are, which are, which is yeah, great. Yeah, but that that's going back to where we were at the beginning. This whole hobby for me was a learning curve as well as like you know something to do because everything was closed. Yeah, yeah. And it's not until you start to do it and and you have the, the necessity uh, to do it or, or the necessity to buy stuff or purchase stuff or build something. Yeah, you really go into the detail. Yeah, exactly. I think this is a hobby that's interesting because we all, obviously we all love history, mm. you know, and military history. Mm. This this has been amazing, and sometimes it's a bit crazy to tell you the truth. If you if you consider for myself, you've been reenacting for a long time. Two and a half months ago, I just started thinking about doing that yeah. one video. Yeah, <laughs> and I was looking online and, and I, I discovered the word that the company sold your fortune, you know. And now look at us, we're talking about razors. <laughs> 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 that, that's the thing that's the last start with me when i did when i did cold war a couple of years ago because I'd, I'd had little bits here and there and stuff from my dad and that because my dad did um 20 years um in the army during from like what 74 to 94 so all through that sort of like period through like northern ireland and germany and all that sort of stuff so i had little bits here and there well, i say little bits quite a few bits that's it and i'd always wanted to get into um cold war reenacting and that to get into it i was just like oh and then I started to get into it, and then it just went, oh, my God, there's so much. Oh, my God. <laughs> and then, yeah, just trying to find, like, 68 pattern, um, like, DPM stuff is a is a hassle in itself. And because they don't make reproductions of anything like that, really. So it's right, even yeah, more, what's... you have to get originals. So is it, is it what's harder, World War Two or? Well, it, it's a bit of a mix, because at least with World War Two, there's a lot of reproduction to fill in the gaps. Right. Um. Obviously, you know, as, as you prove, you can you can get originals. Sometimes a bit more easier than others, but um, it depends. But with um, with Cold War, especially British Cold War, it's very very hit and miss if you can find stuff decent stuff, which isn't just stripped bare and like thing to high heaven. But it, yeah. it, I think, with kit in the way of like webbing and accoutrements, that it's not too difficult. When it comes to uniforms, that's the clincher because you have to get originals. 
there's no other. And it's finding originals that fit. Because even yeah. during the 70s and 80s, people were still skinny buggers and short as well. When you could, like, like you find, like, um, like my 68 pair of trousers, I, that's my second pair. Um, I was lucky to, I was so lucky to find it. They are slightly too short, slightly, but I managed to sort of deal with that with, um, with putties and that. But, um, they, in that size, I found them, I think they're a size, uh, eight, I think, size eight, which is, is only what, a 34 waist or something like that lines, as far as I can remember. So it's very, very tricky. Um, jackets. Yeah, and as you said, you haven't got the, um, the reproduction stuff to fill in the gaps like we have with Yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Because um, every everything has to be original. Um, webbing, all of it. Um, webbing's webbing's the most easy part about it. But there have been some very, very. There a couple of about a month or so ago, there was a gentleman, I won't name him, uh, who came up on one of the one of the groups, um, on one of the Cold War um, selling things, and he was selling a set of. He said, "Oh, completely mint." Um, uh, I think I think it was third pattern. Or whatever it was like, fifty-eight pattern webbing. So completely meant not issued at all, completely whatever. Um, and try and guess what price he was asking for it. Yeah. But right, better right. G- generally, a decent set of fifty-eight will go for maybe thirty, maybe forty quid. He was asking two hundred and fifty quid for it. Oh, there's, there's chances everywhere, isn't there? Honest, honestly, and he kept defending his point, and on the comments were like hilarious. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, I'll have to show you my fifty-eight webbing tomorrow because I know this, this, this to show you how old I am. I have my fifty-eight webbing from the cadets. <laughs> Crikey. I still have it. It was up in the, it's been up in my parents' loft. Right? <clears throat> Bloody hell! And I, I pulled it out and I've got it. I've, not, I've got it here now. I can't go and get it now because the kids. kids yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that's like, that's like my dad because when my dad was in training because he, he joined in seventy-four, um, they were given thirty-seven pattern belts for parade and all that sort of stuff. Um, and obviously, um, junior soldiers, obviously being 16 at the time, they would give them stuff like that. Um, they would give them gators and all that sort of stuff. Like this was the seventies It's yeah. crazy. Uh, and this was like, like for the regular army. It's like, yeah. and, and, and like, like even like, like during the eighties and the, uh, if you went, if you were sent to the glass house and um, the prison in the, in Colchester, um, Colchester. Yeah. Um, you would, um, uh, all your kits in parade would have to be within 37 pattern uh, large pack. Or oh, 1908 large pack, I should say. It was all in there, and all, everything had to be literally yeah. spotless and clean, and it was never enough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's, 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 a, um, there's a video on YouTube about the glass house in like, the late 80s or early 90s, I think, I think it is. I think I've seen something. Cause it, uh, and I, it, I it, remember it, them all wearing 37 pattern gear, yeah. yeah. Yeah, in the thumbnail, they're all on parade in their, like, jump, like, and their jumpers and that with 37 uh, <laughs> with large packs on. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so talking of like, old stuff, how lucky was I to get that original pullover? Because I couldn't oh, see very. it. Oh, very. They're, they're difficult to find. They're really difficult to find. Especially like these decent ones because that one looks like it's in really good nick, like amazing nick. Yeah. Um, and 1940 dated. That's 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 a great little phone, mate. I'm, I'm very jealous about that. No. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I, I paid the guy. Maybe the stuff won't turn up, and it turns yeah. out you know, <laughs> fake account. I say no. Luckily, he's a friend. Gonna get a sponge for a t-shirt or something like that. <laughs> yeah. No, but the the guy, he's um, <coughs> he, he 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 has vehicles. He's yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's got tanks or something, you know. Yeah. He's, he's, he used to do the reenacting. He's, he's, he doesn't do that part of it anymore. He doesn't, yeah. you know. He's, I think he said he was telling me he's, he's only keeping the, the the bare stuff that he needs to be like you know seen in a, in a vehicle. Yeah, yeah. You know, so so cool. But what what's your what what are you really missing then? Um, Apart from you said a second shirt, but yeah, yeah. So I think yeah, it's mainly mainly like underwear and um, and getting oh, the yes. and getting yeah, the. I think, I think, I think I've asked the same question twice now because. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. right. Oh, yeah. uh, just getting the boots redone that's not the main thing I, I picked up um two packets of the um hobnails sof cell um because they're the, the round style ones because then that saves me money them doing it at the at the cobblers because they said oh i think uh, when i phoned them and said oh we think we've got some but if we had to get any it'll probably be uh extra cost on top of that so i thought i'll get those it cost me less than a ten or whatever it was to get the two yeah two packs of them so I'll give them to them when they do when they redo the boots. So it should only be like fifty or quid or something like that to get them redone, and obviously to give them a bit of maintenance and that and a bit of TLC. Um, yeah, I, I have got 
I have got another pair of ammo of um, ammo boots as well, which were did belong to a um, an, a gentleman who uh, I got a few bits of kit from him actually. I got his um, great coat. Um, it was a, it's an American made one because it's an American cut, but to British sort of standards in a way. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, with them, um, it's got um, um, second lieutenant officer's pips on as well. Okay. Yeah, but you're using the the the, the jerk. I was gonna say gherkin, <laughs> the, the, but you're using the leather. Jerk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's a, it's a lovely it's a lovely great coat. Um, it's just a, it's a second lieutenant officer's one. Um, yeah, I've got that and and the ammo boots he had as well. A lovely pair of ammo boots, but I've, I've worn them a few times, but they've they've they destroy my feet. Um, because they're slightly too they're slightly too tight at the back. Right. Um, oh, yeah. I've tried I've tried to break them in, but I, I haven't been able to successfully do that. So, then ones are just staying as like a, a nice pair, maybe for like um, display or whatever. But they are nice as well. But I've got another, I've got another pair of um, ammo boots as well, which I might get rehobbed at some point. But these ones will do for now. Um, they're the ones I had hobbed uh, a couple of years ago, but they put the wrong hobs on. I didn't really, I didn't know that at the time. I just thought, oh, they're hobs. Yeah. So well, I'm, ho- I'm hoping that my those Soldier Fortune ones, because they look great with a, you know. Um, I'm just hoping that they are they are good. Yeah, because I just I just don't want to buy any more boots. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, I think I think I, I generally find when when with kit like I always find boots the most annoying part. I don't know what it is. I, I don't know. I just get really really thinking about it. I'm very reluctant to pay for them. No, not like a nicking or anything. <laughs> but like, no, yeah, I'm not. I don't don't pay for things. No, don't. Just, yeah. just boot thief. <laughs> no, no. I can nick them. Why should I? <laughs> But uh, no, no, I'm just I don't know. There's something about it. It's 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 very very draining. I'm just like oh for God's sake, because it's about like right ones. I think in condition if they're second hand. Um, I don't really want to pay too much because I find because I've I've seen some really really nice. I've, I've been trying to look for Second World War officers' boots, obviously the brown boots for ages. I've seen a few, but like and that were perfect size, correct size, original ones. But they're always asking like stupid money for them, like stupid money. Boots is always a thing which is like ridiculous prices. Even like even DMS, like are going up in price now. Like you like it's, you'll be difficult to find a decent sized DMS boot for under thirty quid, or it, like like um, and even then they're normally small sizes. But and then, well, I always um, I, I noticed when I was searching for ammo boots, nearly every pair I came across had been bulled. Yeah. Be honest, by guardsmen, sort of. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Which is, I think, actually, why I ended up after I got one pair that were quite good. I ended up going for Soldier of Fortune. I just liked them. I, you know those. You know when you keep looking, you go, "Don't go there, Soldier of Fortune." People keep telling you, "Don't go, Soldier of Fortune." Yeah, yeah, I yeah. kept looking, and they were bugging me. Yeah, yeah. And I just thought I like them. I don't know, so I bought them, and I really like them. I, I have no idea if they're going to fall apart within ten minutes. <laughs> but I'm going to find that out this weekend. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, that's that's all the thing. It's the test run, isn't it? Like, um, oh, was it years ago? When when I was in cadets as well, like uh, we we like told these like the Soldier ninety five combat boots, the most dreadful thing <laughs> ever made, and, and, like the most horrible thing on God's good earth. It's it's like they is they they have like a literal shelf life of about five years, and like we're all wearing like ones that have been been in, like stock in like um, storeroom for like probably a decade and a half, um, and. Basically, you sort of walk. You're sort of walking along, or marching along, or whatever, and then you're like, "Well, what's all this black stuff behind us?" And it's just the rubber just disintegrating. They're, they're they are the most yeah, dreadful things. Like I've I've well, I've, I've been size before, and they've come apart. Send you, tomorrow, I send you a picture of my uh, the, the shoes I use for the 18th century red coat. Hob now shoes. Yeah, horrible. <laughs> send send about boots and fall apart actually. These are my work they boots. Fall apart. They're bloody brilliant, but uh, you know, <laughs> these are my work boots when I got home this earlier on. Oh man, I think I think you need to get a desk job. Yeah. <laughs> uh, these these are these are trespass ones as well. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've had them since October. So, but then again, I've been wearing them literally every every day. Um, obviously not over lockdown, but um, at work I was wearing them every day. For like uh, ten hours. Like tomorrow you're gonna have to be wearing your hobnails, isn't it? Yeah. Well, thank you. I'm not work tomorrow, so I'm not too fussed. Uh, <laughs> but I have my DMS to work before. 
That was quite talking, good. To, talking to work though, I better I better be starting to get over to the. Oh yeah, yeah. no, no, no worries, mate. No worries. I've got some late late night eBaying to do as I used. <laughs> no, it's an no. intervention. No. <laughs> uh, I, I actually, I have been on. I've, I've actually deliberately. At one point, I deleted the app from my phone because <laughs> I was going for a poo, and I'd spend thirty quid. <laughs> You know, no, I, mate, I've done the same, and I come up and was like, I, I feel dreadful now. But and then, or you, you all forget about when it arrives at the door. You're like, yay! And then you, then you, then you accidentally glance at the in, the invoice that comes with it. Oh dear! But over there, don't want to look at the price I paid. Yeah. <laughs> but then there's always the credit cards, isn't there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Will they accept me this time? I need another one. <laughs> don't worry, you can use me. You don't have to pay for next month. <laughs> And this month comes, and <laughs> no, wait, you're you're um uh number one mark. How many? Do you say you got two number one mark threes? Or I can't remember what you said. I've got six. Oh, you got six. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, have you got any BSA ones? Uh, yes, I've got a 1918 BSA. Oh. Yeah, that's literally the same as mine, actually. Yeah. 1918. Yeah, 1918 BSA. Yeah. Number one mark three star. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just see about. Maybe. Uh, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And then yeah. the bolt as well. And I've got a 1917 Enfield made, and I've got some um, number one Mark III. Um, and I've got, I've got a lovely, my favourite number <coughs> one Mark III is my LSA 1915 with volley sights. Uh, you know, it's uh, oh, lovely. God intended. That's one of my favourites. Uh, um, I've got a lovely number one Mark One. But I'll tell you what, which Enfield I love. I love my Longley. Mm. You know, the, 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 the magazine Lee Enfield. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Did I you start reenacting that as well. Yeah, <laughs> come on. Yeah. Does, your, does your LSA, does it have um, the charger bridge or does it um, have the uh, ch- um, charger guide on the bolt? Or is it no, one of no, those? The charger guide on the bolt is the number one Mark One. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The number one Mark Three has the, um, uh, you know, uh, the number one Mark Three had the charger wire. Now, but I've also got a number one Mark Three, a number one Mark One Three Star, that has had the 1912 um, modification by the by the British Navy, where they added the Charger Guide. Oh, okay. So got number one Mark One Three Star <coughs> Charger Guide as of the 1912. Oh, wow. well, that's cool. Unfortunately, the situation is now. Otherwise, I'd have them all out to show you. So maybe another yeah. time we can do another video, and I can. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Some, yeah. Some rifles. Yeah, that no, that'd be great. Yeah, because um. Because yeah, I've got the number four and uh, number one Mark Three Star. They're the only DX I have. Um, everything else is either airsoft or yeah, mainly airsoft really. Um, oh, just... I've got, I, I do have one airsoft, and that was just for plinking in the house during lockdown. It's just an uh, like um, um, an, uh, GNG SA80. Oh no no no! I remember. Yeah, you said you said the little video you did from indoors. Yeah. Yeah yeah. <laughs> so this is um. Oh, let's come this one. My SLF SLR. I saw that when you did a video, you were chatting with. Um, what's Sorry, it? Man. Yeah. Okay. Obviously, it's not perfect, but honestly, it's honestly. I'll say for what they did for the SLF one, plastic furniture, I would say is very, very close to the original, like yeah. extremely close. Yeah. Um, well, I'll be the judge the, of that one. The version could be better, i.e. they could have made it out of wood, which wouldn't split, but <laughs> honestly, not bad. Yeah. I, I, I don't like anything modern, and that yeah. to me is modern, but I love that. I mean, I'm not joking. That is nip, nipple-twitchingly sexy, the SLR. <laughs> you know? Honestly, yeah, like, my, I, sp- I spoke to my dad, like, like, because he, obviously, he was in when they transitioned to the um, L85. He was like, yeah, it was um, it was it was better when we were in in Northern Ireland. He was saying like, when you're knocking on some Paddy's door and you're going inside for a quick chat, um, or like, when you're getting out the back of a pig. But everything else, it was shit. <laughs> <laughs> but no, he said he said he loved the SL- He said he loved the SLR. Well, if I'll have to get you over to Italy then, so you can have a go at mine. Oh, that'd be lovely, mate. I've been wanting to go to me and my partner have been wanting to go to Italy for years. So well, then you're invited. Thank you, mate. Appreciate that. <laughs> Buy me a shirt first, okay? an original, otherwise you can't come. What's that? Buy me a shirt, though, an original World War Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm joking. I'm joking. No, no. I see what I've got. <laughs> I see what I've got. But, um, what was it? No, I've, I've got some other little 
bits I'm trying to sell as well. So just to get some money here and there. So um, I I did sell like two um, 1950s officers bush shirts recently as well. So, Anything off my my list that I need that you want to get rid of? Um. I love a look. I love a look. I'll have to have a look again because I've got it's all in boxes at the moment. Because normally I have, I have the spare room as sort of my um, mini museum. Yeah. Uh, it's being um, used at the moment by um, my partner's dad because he's living with us at the moment. Well, there's stuff. Um, but yeah. Uh, so it's normally used in there. So I normally have stuff on display. But um, I have to look through the boxes. I've got a few bits here and there. If you need, yeah, I think, like, as, as I said, the main thing I'm missing, apart from obviously getting some decent original or good reproduction shirts i'm missing the cap converter yeah uh, uh, and that's easy to find you know? yeah well my, my one was in my dad's um um kit bag because they, they're still listening to him today so um oh yeah i've got a kit bag coming as well yeah that uh, there you go yeah that, that was as bad i thought brilliant like that um yeah I, i've got my kit bag i actually i've got my kit bag from sof i think years ago well i've, I've got i'm gonna have two kit bags now because I found a kit bag in my shed. All oh, right. <laughs> and it's um, it turns out it's a 1943. Oh wow! Um, <clears throat> but the guy I bought the stuff off, he had another one. It was in slightly better condition, so I got that as well. Uh, so this this is the thing that like, it's just finding those little gem bargains, isn't it? This is why I love going to shows, though. I think once once everything gets put, and then obviously for you for next weekend, or well, this weekend, was this, this weekend? weekend? Yeah, this yeah. weekend. Hopefully they've got some stalls there which have some cheap bargains uh there's a couple i'm trying to remember the name of there's a guy i can't remember what his name of the company is but he'll try and rip you off he might be there i don't know um well, there's I'm there's, there's what there's one or two guys who have like 37 pattern webbing for fucking stupid prices yeah. like well, really really stupid prices within two months I'm, I'm almost becoming an expert now <laughs> <laughs> because i've been ripped off so many times now you know I've yeah crap. tell me about it mate tell me about it oh well, Great, great, thing, great thing to keep in your um, uh, wash roll, though. Uh, spare laces and string. Got the spare laces. Yes, yeah, a bit uh, like a like a um, like a yard or two yards of string or whatever. Literally, cause any soap. anything could come up. You're like, oh, perfect, great. That, that's oh, that's. I have got. I haven't got soap. <clears throat> mm. um, old time design company, have it. That's where I got mine from. And honestly, it's great because it's. That and the um, shaving soap, which I got from the, the Arco, or whatever one's from eBay. That one there. Yeah, I, I'm, I bought, I'm, I'm looking for a shaving soap tin. Um, oh, but, I'm, uh, looking, I'm looking for the um, shaving soap, soap tin as well because I've I bought the shaving soap stick from Old Time Design. You know, but yeah. it's in the box. Yeah. Oh yeah. You can't really get oh, the exactly, box. Yeah. So I was, I was looking, I'm, I'm going to get a tin as well, but I haven't seen one about. Keep an eye out. I'll yeah, so they're, they're really, I looked and they're really difficult to find. Any that I've yeah. found are actually like upwards of 50 quid for one. Like, it's like I'm not paying that for a small tin. No, so no. I, might, I might see if I can find something which is like maybe similar size. Well, actually, I think there's like the cigarette, the emergency cigarette tins are similar shape. And I think there's a place that makes reapers and I think they're similar shape. I might get one and try it out and see if it fits but yeah must right. have the great thing the great thing about it having the soap and then the uh, shaving soap in there it makes your haversack smell amazing <laughs> well, honestly it, it, sm it smells constantly like someone's been washing and it's so nice i was gonna so, say otherwise all, all the musty smell from anything it was all gone now so it's great <laughs> well that's it I, listen there's, there's one thing about me I'm, i must be a total pervert i love that musty old 37 pattern smell <laughs> I, I don't know why I, I could sniff it for ages but that that's Probably why I'm weird and doing this. Honestly, when the shirt arrived, I smelled it. I was like, well, that's nice. That's really nice. <laughs> did, did, did you, uh, um, I don't know if you ever get, you, you, there was a shop down in, um, down the South Sea. He closed a few years ago. He was called um, Sabre Sales. Did you ever go to his shop at all any time? Mate, I only moved back to the UK after 20 years in Italy. Oh, and <laughs> <half> ago. <laughs> he, he, he'd been there for about, oh God, 50 years, I think. Something along the lines, or or thirty, fifty, oh, well, forty or fifty years, or something like. That. He'd been there for years. He's, he's still alive. His name's Nick, um, Nick, something or whatever. But he's on Facebook actually. Um, yeah, he had this. He had this shop called Saber Sales, and when it was at the well, when it was open, open properly, when he wasn't sort of closing down, and selling everything off, 
Um, it was a huge, quite a large building. Sort of went in this sort of a small sort of build, building first thing with this sort of large corridor bit. A side room where you could sort of rent stuff, but in the main bit you're like hundreds of pairs of boots, helmets, and everything like that. And you went down to the cellar, like hundreds of like helmet shells and thirty seven pattern webbing and all sort of stuff. Then you went outside, there was a separate room downstairs which was called the thirty seven pattern cellar. Um, which literally every single bit of thirty seven you could think of for literally everything was like under a tenner each. Wow. It was insane. The amount like he accumulated stock over years. Like there was loads of it. The condition of it was hit and miss, depending on you can find it, because it was just kept in, a, kept in these places for just donkey's years. Um, it had more rooms. Above that, there was a massive warehouse, which he kept, like, great coats and, like, long garments and everything, like, from the Royal Navy to the... Uh, when it was in a really bloody balloon corps. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Like, lo- loads of different stuff. Um, it was insane. Like, he sold some amazing stuff. I did pick up some great stuff from there. Um, I think I picked up a Belgian... Parasmock there for like 25 quid, like 1956. I mean, the, the only fair I've been to since I moved back to the UK mm. was what was that one I went to the arms fair? You were going to, oh, yeah, um, Kent Wall, no, yeah, you must Kempton. Be. Kempton. Did, you, did you get anything good from there? Uh, well, I, okay, I, the only thing I picked up from there was I, I found a 1944 dated um rifle sling that I wanted to go with my, my 1944 Long Branch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, some dummy rounds. But, <clears throat> the, okay, so it was mainly about, it was mainly antique weapons, and it was really interesting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, recruitments and, uh, uh, and the other bits and pieces I had there, equipment, stupid prices. I'm talking telling yeah. the prices. Yeah. Even bayonets. Uh, I, like, I like the military fairs, but that's the thing about them. When it's a military fair, where they've all just got stalls, and it's all like a car park sort of thing, or something like that, they're, they're always... That certain type of dealer is like, oh yeah, yeah, I could, I could sell it for you for the price that is normal, but I could sell it for you for the price of your car. Like it's. Yeah. it's well, it's... no, I mean, you know, for example, I saw a nice. I was looking for a nineteen eight, a nineteen oh seven pattern bayonet for my for my yeah. older son because yeah. he shoots as well. It was a yeah. One. Oh, a nice one. It was a nineteen eighteen, um, you know, scabbard. You know, I was like, oh, you know, I mean, considering a nineteen oh seven, they go for about 100, 120 quid, depends on the condition. Yeah. yeah oh, two hundred eighty quid. Uh, yeah, what? it's insane. It's insane. Yeah. But then again, these are for chances. They're for the people. That, I mean, they're selling to the kind of you know the occasional buyer that's there at curiosity. They think, oh, that looks cool. And they'll they'll yeah. pay. They don't know, you know, yeah. which which is which is the world of eBay as well. You know, I know exactly because I think my my picked up a nineteen fifteen one. Um, Sanderson made one for I think it was what ninety five quid, including post and packaging. That's that is the standard nine hundred quid is I would say is a standard mm. price. They yeah. did have a Vickers one on sale there for for four hundred and fifty quid. That's nice. That's Vickers, Vickers yeah. nineteen oh seven bayonet. In fact, Richard was like, "Oh, <laughs> that's good, but very, they're very expensive." Yeah. Anyway, listen, I'm going to go, but no worries, uh, mate. let's sort out of the chat soon where we can get yeah, some definitely. rifles. Yeah, definitely. So I can watch you dribble a bit. You know. <laughs> <laughs> damn you! Damn you! <laughs> Yeah, but you've got a shirt. Um, and good, have good luck with um, the first event on the weekend as well, mate. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm a bit apprehensive. I've never done one of these before. I've done only 18th century. I don't know the drill. I don't know what the people are like. <laughs> um, be, they all seem really, really nice on Facebook, but they might rape me when I'm there. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so not. Jesus we'll, Christ. See, we'll see what happens. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. It's good. Yeah. Looking forward to it. All right. All right, Next, mate. Mate. right. I've got to go to eBay. I mean, I've got to go to bed. Catch you later, mate. Bye. Catch you later. Bye, mate. Bye. Okay, I hope you really enjoyed that. Um, apologies, it was a very, very long video. But um, I enjoyed it. I hope you did too. Um, we just got... <laughs> we kept remembering something else and something else came up and all that sort of stuff. So we got through, we got through a lot. We will hopefully be playing another one of these. Um, because we really enjoyed... As I said, we really enjoyed um, doing it. So I hope you did too. And any questions, please leave them in the comments below. As I said, I put Kevin's uh, channel in the description below. I will put a link to um, my Facebook page as well, as I normally do. And that's it, really. Um, I hope you should be getting another video soon. Um, I keep saying that every single time I do a video. But I really should be now. I'm, I'm back at work now as well, so... Um, normally that would be normally the opposite, but I found that I generally my video schedule was better when I was working when I wasn't, so that's the point. 
yeah so i really hope you enjoyed and um i'll see you again soon bye